This is Hellfire RPGs, and today you're watching Know The Facts. Final Fantasy VIII has been out for over 15 years now, and I still consider it one of the best RPGs ever made. There is a lot to this game, and this video is going to look at some of the things that you probably don't know about in this masterpiece. We all know this song, perfect track for an awesome part of the game. But did you know that its title, Fethos Lufsek Wekos Vinosek, is an anagram for the phrase Succession of Witches and Love, which are two of the core themes in this game. Pretty cool, right? I thought so too. The introduction track, Libere Fatali, also has some significance as it translates to Fated Children in Latin. These two tracks are undeniably awesome, and the USA synchronized swimming team agrees as they use these tracks for the 2004 Olympic Games routine. Tener una composición diversa para establecer la técnica, la calificación de mérito técnico, así como la de impresión. They only won a bronze medal. I would have given them a gold. Some of the design in Final Fantasy VIII also drew inspiration from the real world. Dealing City is said to resemble Paris, and this is particularly evident in the structure that looks a lot like the Arc de Triomphe. Squall's character was also apparently modelled from Japanese musician Gact. I can definitely see some resemblance there. Speaking of inspiration, Squaresoft clearly had some massive Michael Jackson fans in its staff. Not only are the dancers pulling the moves to Thriller during the Dealing City Parade, but the bonus DVD for The Spirits Within has a short video of the characters dancing to Thriller. Why the hell not? There are clearly some Star Wars fans among the developers too, as there are a load of Star Wars inspired character names. Most obvious is Biggs and Wedge, who are Alliance fighter pilots, but some other characters include Nida, Piet, and Martin, who is named Dodonna in the Japanese version. And who could deny Nog's resemblance to Jabba? They're both in serious need of a treadmill. Most Western gamers probably wouldn't know this, but back in the era there was a small peripheral device known as the Pocket Station, which was available only in Japan, but sold a healthy 5 million units. This tiny device was designed to provide extra content to PlayStation 1 games, and Final Fantasy VIII was one of the few titles that retained the Pocket Station's functionality in their localised versions. So what is this functionality? It was a mini-game called Chocobo World, and it allowed you to run around as Boko, fighting monsters and collecting items to use in the real game. If you're interested in giving this a shot, check out eBay. And yes, they're 100% compatible with all localised Final Fantasy VIII titles. Alternatively, you can play it as a companion app on most PC versions of the game. Most people tend to finish Final Fantasy VIII in about 60 hours on their first playthrough. However, if you leave it on past the 100 hour mark, the timer resets and changes colour. This happens through several colour changes until it eventually just stops. I'll finish things off with Final Fantasy VIII's Hollywood appearance. We all remember Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu kicking ass in Charlie's Angels, right? But do you remember the bit where Drew Barrymore comes crashing into a backyard, naked? Those two nerds didn't even notice. They were too busy button mashing through a random encounter, and playing it two player, which of course isn't possible in Final Fantasy VIII. Oh well, at least they got the half naked Drew right. If you liked this video, please click like and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.